set some challenging goals. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Set some goals that'll make you stretch. Become more than you ever thought you could become. Not only business goals, set some personal goals. You know, who do you want to become? And set some goals for your family. They're depending on you to help set their goals. They can think of some things, but you've got to fill in all the rest about what's important for family, for future. So take on that responsibility of setting family goals, personal goals. If you're married, it's goals for your marriage. If it's friendship, it's goals for your friendship. Here's the deal. Reasons make the difference in how your life works out. When I first met my mentor, I'm 25 years old. He said, Mr. Owen, I think you've got enough desire. I think you certainly have enough ambition. You're certainly willing enough. Probably what you need now is enough reasons to change your life. And if you have a strong enough reasons, you'll get up a little earlier and stay up a little later. Listen a little more carefully if you have enough reasons. So I'm asking you, while you're here, spend some time on that. And especially when you get home, find some time to get away. You and your husband, you and your wife, get away, set those goals, get together with the family, set some more goals, get together with your organization when you get back, set those goals. One of the major reasons for setting goals is for what they make of you in achieving them. My teacher advised me when I first got started at age 25, he said, Jim, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. You know, enough zeros to impress your accountant. And he said, I'm here to help you. You're only 25 years old. You've been to one year of college. You've got a beautiful family, every reason to do it. Why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? And he said, here's why. And I thought, he doesn't need to teach me why. Wouldn't it be nice to have a million dollars? He said, no, then you'll miss it. He said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. I'm telling you that statement changed my life. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. He said, now, once you become a millionaire, what's important is not the money. I thought, that's kind of strange teaching. He said, honest, it isn't important. He said, you could just give the money away. Now, I did better than that. I lost it all. By the time I was 31, I was a millionaire. By the time I was 33, I was broke. But when I lost all my money, guess what? I found out Mr. Schoff was right. What was valuable was not the money. What was valuable was what I became to earn the money, the skills I had, the knowledge I had about the marketplace, the values that I had going for me. They were more valuable than the money. And here's an important statement to remember. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. So part of the key here is to set the kind of goals that will make something of you. Don't set them too low so that you don't have to grow and you don't have to read and you don't have to try and you don't have to stretch. Don't set them too low. And then don't sell out. Don't go for something that's going to cost you your virtue or cost you your values or sell out your principles. There's a good middle road here to follow. Goals that will inspire, goals that will help you grow, change, develop, and become better than you are. What kind of person must I become to achieve all I want? Now we've got two things working. What you become helps you to achieve, and what you achieve helps you to become. And the more you become, the more you can achieve, and the more you achieve, the more you can become. Who knows which affects the other the most? So now just write this exercise. Start with a few sentences. Your concept of the person you think you must become to achieve what you want. This is time for a little truth here. Maybe you need to become much wiser than you are at the moment. You need to become stronger. You need to have better health. Maybe you need a little coaching to really become the person I want to become. I'm going to have to have some coaching, physical coaching, spiritual coaching. Developing skills, coaching. To be the influence you want to be, you've got to build an incredible reputation. What kind of person must I be to attract all that I want in my life and the people that I want and the opportunities that I want? When you knock on the door, an opportunity opens. 
you must stand there as a very attractive person or you may not be invited in. Make these notes. The key is to put everything on your list. Now, the key is to take it out of your head and put it on paper. You know, you can dream about what you want, but when you start committing it to paper, now it more formalizes. Information now starts to make a composite of an idea. And ideas can turn into hotels. Ideas can turn into enterprises. Ideas can turn into a fabulous career. We need the information. We need the stimulation. Now, jot this down. It's very important, if something's not that important to you, to take it off your list. You don't have to accomplish this whole list. But if you had 100 items on your list and you accomplished 80, who cares about the other 20? If you got the biggest share of what you went for, wouldn't that be enough? And the answer is probably yes, it'd be overwhelming. Okay. So you can rearrange this list. You can change it. You can tear it up and start over. You can say, oh, you know, last year I thought this was so important. That, that's not important to me anymore. The things I've learned in the last 12 months, I've changed my whole goal list. I thought this was so it. Now, here's the next note. There's two great words of antiquity everybody should learn. Here they are. One's positive and one's negative. Here's the positive word from antiquity. Behold. That's the positive word. Behold the possibilities. Behold the opportunity. Behold the future and give it design. Behold and look at the chances you've got. Behold, spring has come. Behold, the day has arrived and the sun is shining and the shadows are fleeing away. Behold, the next person you can meet might be your friend for life. Behold, the next person might be a colleague forever. Behold, that's the positive word, behold. Now, here's the negative word, beware. And now I want to give you a sentence to jot down that's very valuable. Here's what it is. Beware of what you become in pursuit of what you want. Beware. All of our lives, we have to deal with behold and beware. When a kid goes to school, it's behold the opportunity and beware the dangers. Behold and beware. So beware of what you become, pursuing what you want. Some things I went for in the very beginning cost me too much. I got so obsessed with some things that I found out later the price was too big to pay. If I would have known better, I never would have paid. But sometimes we learn when? After. So don't become so obsessed with something that you lose your sense of reason or it costs you your friends. Don't be so obsessed with something that you compromise your virtues and your values. Beware of what you become in pursuit of what you are. Don't sell out. It's not worth it. And now here's the last note. If you'll start this glorious journey of being meticulous, deliberate, and hardworking about setting your goals for the day, setting your goals for the month and the year, setting your goals for your family and yourself and your business and your colleagues, start thinking forward. Here's what you will become. A major contributor, not only to yourself, but a major contributor to others. And that's exactly what you want. Now, here's what's called the self-knowledge acid test. Quickly, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Achievements that you want to make. Achievements that will take a while to get. Write them down. Again, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important personal and spiritual goals. Things that will make a difference in your personal life. Is it going to church more often than holidays? Grasping all you can from the Sunday sermon? Is it spending more quality time with your kids? Is it turning the TV off during the dinner hour and actually talking about the important things in life with your family? Is it making more dates with your spouse? Is it planning a much needed family vacation? What is it? 
What are the important goals in your personal and spiritual life? Is one of them making a conscious effort to exercise more, to eat better, to lose some weight, to get in shape? What are the three most important personal and spiritual goals that you have? Write them down. Doesn't matter what they are, just write them down. Now, take some time to really visualize what the achievement of these goals would look like. What does your future hold for you if you landed that big client? What does your future look like if you got that promotion? If you spent more time with your family? If you planned more outings with your spouse? What does your future look like? Really spend some time on this now. It's important stuff. What does it all look like? Ask yourself, is this really my goal? Is this truly what I want? Is it a positive goal? Is it important enough to me to become what it takes to reach this goal? Is it mine? Is it worth it? Redefine what actually is important to you. Redefine how hard you'll really work to get them. Now, there are two parts to this goal setting and redefining process. Number one, don't set your goals too low. An interesting thing that we teach in leadership, don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure is on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. Now here's the second part on setting goals. Number two is don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd known back then how much it was going to cost me, I never would have gone for them. But I didn't know. Don't sell out. Achievement means moving forward. And in order to move forward, you must be motivated, inspired, ambitious. You must have dreams and goals that create ambition. Good ambition. Positive ambition. Now, ambition does not mean being greedy. It does not mean being selfish. It does not mean getting ahead at the expense of others. Ambition is not greed. Ambition is not avarice and all-consuming desire for wealth. Ambition is not hoping you can win at the expense of others. Ambition is not greed. Ambition is an eager desire to achieve, an eager desire to get ahead in life, to do more for your family, to prosper in health, wealth, and relationships. Now, desire does not always translate into ambition. Desire is what you want for yourself. A bigger house, a better car, a fatter bank account, a better life. I desire to have these things. Ambition is how you get there. Desire is sometimes healthy. Desire is sometimes unhealthy. Desire might say, I want the tallest building in town. The destructive side of desire might urge you to tear all of the other buildings down. I guess that's one way to do it. You might get away with tearing down the first one and maybe the second one. But in your desire to tear them all down, sooner or later, some guy is going to be standing out in front of his building saying, I'm on to you. Get out of here. And pretty soon you're no longer known as a builder. You're known as a destroyer. Now, the second way to have the tallest building in town is to see it, dream it, and plan it, and put your team on it, work on it. Go through all of the steps to get there. Do it right. Have the ambition to be the owner of the tallest building in town. And go through all of the right steps to get there. If you really want it and have the skills to do it, and the patience to weather all of the storms, your ambition will lead you there. Having the ambition to do what it takes to get you where you want to go is good. Ambition is creative and constructive. Ambition is an expression. It's something inside of you you want to express in a positive way. I'm sure you have dreams of accomplishing great things. 
Are you ambitious enough to realize these dreams? Are your dreams strong enough to pull you toward your future? Are they vivid enough to see the end result now? Are they worthy of doing until you get there? What are your reasons for creating these dreams? Reasons vary from person to person. The list of reasons. Why is it so important to achieve these dreams? What are you trying to express? These reasons for accomplishing great things are different for everybody. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some people do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. And that is one of the best reasons. Once in a while, I hear someone say, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. Hey, that's probably why the good Lord sees to it that he doesn't get his million, because he would just quit. Family is another reason, a motivator for doing well. Some people do extremely well because of other people. And that's a powerful reason. Sometimes we will do something for someone else that we would not do for ourselves. How fortunate are the people who find themselves greatly affected by someone else? It's powerful. What has you getting up early, hitting it hard all day and staying up late? What has you inspired? What are your reasons for doing well? What's at the core of your quest? Set a goal that will make you stretch for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future, to see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. The major question to ask on the job is not, what am I getting here? The major question to ask is, what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. Learning to live well, because the ultimate essence of life is not a Ferrari. The ultimate essence is not a home. The ultimate essence is not a bank account. It's not a million dollars. It's not a fortune. Here it is. The ultimate essence of life is learning to live a good life. That's the key. Whether you have modest resources or whether you have mega millions, either way, the real key is learning to live a good life. For living the good life, here it is. Productivity. You really won't be that happy if you don't produce. And here's the next bit of advice on that. Produce to the max, if you possibly can. To produce a little is okay. To produce enough is okay. To produce some to get by is all right. But why not try productivity to the max? Andrew Carnegie, who built the steel industry back in the 30s, here's what Andrew said. I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life he accumulated $400 million, which back in the 30s was a lot of money. A mega fortune. Guess what he did the last half of his life? He gave it all Away. I got a good question for, for you as we close. Here's the question. What's got you turned on? What's got you up early? What's got you eager to face the day? What's got you inspired to learn the extra skill, put in the extra time, go the extra mile, learn how to work with people, guarantee your future? Good question.